Our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. How be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth. On earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this night. Give us this night. A daily rest. A daily rest. And forgive us our trespasses. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those. As we forgive those. Who trespass against us. Who trespass against us. And lead us not. Lead us not, dear Lord. In temptation. In temptation. But deliver us. But deliver us. From the evil one. From the evil one for that is the kingdom and power of forever and ever. Good night, I, God. I found this little thing before I, I pray the healing prayer. Every name is a touchstone. And it leads... To a, to a place in time where God has used another's heart to reach and touch mine. It may have happened years ago or even yesterday, but every person that's on my list has changed my life some way. Through simple conversation, a warm hug or a shared meal, Every person on my list has helped me grow or heal, or laugh or love, or learn to or smile. The blessings never end. As God allows our paths to cross as family and friends. It's a thank you card to God for putting you on my list. Each and every one whose name I've come to hold so dear. I do, I do, I do. I hold so dear. Praise be to God. A healing prayer for our sick one, loved ones. Almighty Lord, I come before your throne today on behalf of all my sick loved one, ones. Father, they are weak and their body is in pain. So many people, so many loved ones that we need to pray for. They're suffering. And we have to pray that God will ease their pain and even heal him, them, you know? That's the most important thing that we have. I pray that you have mercy on them and heal them from these diseases. You are Lord, the all-powerful one, the almighty one. There's nothing that is beyond you. So I humbly ask you to touch them with your healing grace and restore them to health. Remind them of your love for them and help them to trust in you for their recovery. And Lord, show them, please, their, your healing power and make them whole again. I ask this in Jesus' name. You know, I just wish that I could remember certain prayers but a lot of times I can't. But my heart goes out to each and every one of you who has sick loved ones. I have, so I know you have. Sickness and depression and all kinds of things, they hit us in our lives. God uses them to grow us. Sometimes I even admit I'd like to grow a little less, but no, I understand why. It's to reach out to other people who are going through what I've gone through. I can't tell you everything that I've go gone through because certain things, they're not supposed to be broadcast. But I can tell you even in my darkest, darkest hour, when I had no hope. And I know what it's like, believe me, I know what it's like to be in that dark place, to have no hope. But then a light shined through that darkness, radiant light. 
God sent an angel. He sent a message. He sent somebody to let me know of how God loves us unconditionally. And to know that kind of love, I want you to know too, because it is so special. For you to know unconditional love, no matter who you are or what you are, that God loves you. But he doesn't love sin. Don't be honest with that. That's why if you're sinning, you need to confess it and repent. I know you think it's hard to repent, but it's not really. If you can be honest with yourself and you feel like you're so much alone, you're not. There's somebody out there that will be there for you. And that's my prayer for you all tonight. Don't be afraid. There's hope out there. I've known many people that have said, God, if you're really God, show me. And he does. And that's the truth. I've actually never said that part, but I often wondered what it would feel like if you doubted that much and you cried out to him and he answered you right away. We, I serve a God that is miraculous. I can tell you the mighty things over and over what he's done in my life. Someday when I get enough coverage, maybe I will let you know one of my secrets, how God was there for me. But for now, we're going to read the Bible. Jesus is calling July 11th. Worship me only. Idolatry has always been the downfall of my people. I make no secrets about being a jealous God. Current idols are more subtle than ancient ones because today's false gods are often outside the field of religion. People possession status and self aggrandizement aggrandizement are some of the most popular deities today. But where of falling down before these things, false gods never satisfy. Instead, they stir up lust for more and more. When you seek me instead of the world's idols, their experience with my joy and peace, the intangibles, stake the thirst of your soul, providing deep satisfaction, the glitter of the world is tiny, tinny, and temporal. The light of my presence is brilliant and everlasting. Walk in the light with me, thus you become a beacon through when others are drawn to me. Exodus Chapter 20, verses 
one five. Second Samuel, chapter twenty two, verse twenty nine. Not too much to read tonight. Spiritual, spiritual decline under Manasseh. For a quarter of a century under Hezekiah's continuous leadership, conscientious, conscientious leadership, Judah has experienced a spiritual revival. But every generation must determine its own commitment. And the fibers of faith are so fragile that a single misguided leader can entice the hearts of believers to worship lesser gods. Whether it, it is because Hezekiah was so busy leading his nation to God that he neglected his own children, or because his son at the age of 12 takes the reins of power at far too early an age, the sad fact is that Manasseh turns the people from, from God back to idolatry and other pagan practices. Manasseh, king of Judah. And Manasseh's son succeeded him as king. Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for 55 years. His brother's name was Hephzibah. Judah returns to paganism. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the successful practices of the nation that the Lord had driven out for 40 years of rights. He would build the high places his father Hezekiah had destroyed. He also erected altars to Baal and made a national pole, as they have king of Israel had done. He bowed down to all the starry hosts and worshipped them. He built altars in the temple of the Lord, which the Lord had said, In Jerusalem, I will put my name in the two courts of the temple of the Lord. He built altars for all starry hosts. He sacrificed his own son in the fire. Practiced divination, sought omens, and consulted mediums and spiritualists. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger. He took the car of Ashel Paul and he had made and put it in the temple, of, a, of which the Lord had said to David and, and his son Solomon, in the temple in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. I will not again take the feet of the Israelites, wander from land I gave their ancestors. If only they will be careful to do everything I commanded them and will keep the whole law that my servant Moses gave them. But the people did not listen. Manasseh led them astray, so that they did more evil than the nations the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. Ruled by, ruled by bloodshed. Moreover, Manasseh also shed so much innocent blood that he filled Jerusalem from end to end. Besides the sin that he had caused Judah to commit so that they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. A message of the prophets. The Lord said through his servants, the prophets, Manasseh, king of Judah, has committed these detestable sins. He has done more evil than the Amorites who preceded him and has led Judah into sin with its idols. Therefore, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. I'm going to bring such disaster on Jerusalem and Judah that the ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. I will stretch out over Jerusalem the measuring line used against Samaria and the plumb line used against the 
house of Ahab, I will wipe out Jerusalem as one wipes a dish, wiping it and turning it upside down. I will forsake the remnant of my inheritance and give them into the hands of their enemies. They will be looted, plundered by all their enemies because they have done evil in my eyes and have aroused my anger from the day their ancestors came out of Egypt till this day. Praise be to God. Heavenly Father, born confessing in Jesus that the devil has no more power than me. I believe in this life. So always remember, the devil operates power blind signs and fake wonders. Guided. I will lead the blind by the road they do not know, by paths that they have not known. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light, the rough places into level ground. These are the things I will do and will not forsake them. Isaiah 42, 16. When you feel that you have lost your way and your feet can't feel the path beneath you, God promises, he does, that he will lead you forward even if you can't see what lies ahead. And though the road feels rocky and unsure, God will guide you. And the path that seems impassable will become smooth. And the way that seems impossible will become straightforward. God promises that he will do this for you and more. Why? Because he loves you and his love that never fails or forsakes. I love, I love, and I, I understand. He never leaves me or forsakes me. Thank you, God, for your promise to guide me, no matter how impossible the way seems. And I'm going to repeat that. Thank you, God, for the promises you guide me, no matter how impossible the way may seem. Kimaha so for life. Praise ye to God. Praise ye to God. Layers. July 11th. Forgiveness isn't always one time thing. There are layers of what need to be recognized. Sometimes we have forgotten, but we don't realize how many layers there are. And if we don't deal with each layer, Hardness of the heart can set in. And this is what God has to say tonight. What is the state of your heart? Practicing forgiveness is important to you and to the person you need to forgive. Refusing to forgive places you in a self-imposed bondage to the past. Ask me to search your heart. Are you holding grudges? Are you avoiding someone because of what she or he said about you or done to you? When something has asked, when someone has asked for forg your forgiveness, have you said, I forgive you? But later realize that you're still harboring bitterness and anger. Be aware of the lay layers of hurt that cause initial problems. Harsh words are often hard to forget. The memory of evil deeds may be deeply embedded in your heart. The Apostle Paul said, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. Allow me to heal your heart and that of the offender. This may take some time, let me peel back the layers of your pain and breathe my healing into your soul through scripture and through the peace that you will find in my presence. Peter came and asked, Lord, 
how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, he replied, but 70 times seven. Matthew 18, 21 to 22. And that's what God says. Forgiveness. If you don't forgive and you end up with bitterness and stuff like that, let me tell you what bitterness does. It might not even be in, you know, the person that you're 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 bitter about is even giving you a second thought. But what bitterness does and unforgiveness does is causes sickness in your body. Really, it does. To be free. To be free and going well. Don't ha have any bitterness in you. Don't have any unforgiveness in you. Don't hold a grudge. Don't hold on to wrongness. You forgive them whether you did it to them or they did it to you, one way or the other. It doesn't matter. If you've asked for forgiveness and they don't give it to you, well, that's okay. Because you have released what you had to do. And that's what you do is you release it. And that's what one of the things that... Every night I try to, you know, get one way or the other to make you understand. You need Jesus. You really do. And you can come before him. Yes, the hard part is to admit that you are a sinner. <laughs> I'm a sinner. We're all sinners. But most of the all bad things that when I became, had got that personal relationship with him, all the stuff that I did, good, bad, ugly, got washed away. I became what they call born again, but I, I didn't go back into my mother. What I became was born of the spirit of God. And that is a whole new story. Everything you did in the, in the past, it's all forgotten. God doesn't keep records of it. He did before. I found that out. But once you've been, had your soul washed clean and your sins all forgiven you're a brand new person you know I can't I, I can't be you know screaming and hollering and I don't think Jesus screamed and holler, hollered at you his message was simply I died on the cross for your sins, for your healings, so that you can be born, you can have a clean slate and live for eternity. This body we have is just a shell. Inside, it has been proven that we have a soul. We have a spiritual soul. We're not soulless. Satan is, but we're not. God wants you to come to him. He has open arms. And all you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, his son. Ask him into your heart and ask for forgiveness. And you'll be clean. And you'll be born again of the Spirit.
So may God bless you and keep you. And hey, I think he's going to be whispering your name tonight. <laughs> Don't think you're crazy when you hear it. I heard God's voice once. And I am so proud and honored that one time his audible voice was spoken to me. But he speaks to me in the words in the Bible. He sends angels to me to for me to to help me at times when I'm really, really desperate. And I believe. You can believe too. So may God bless you and keep you. And may his light shine upon you tonight. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, you take care of yourselves. Good night and amen.